Welcome to Soul Live, and welcome everyone who's been watching, will be watching at home at some future time. We are in Encinitas, California, where the light of love is always on. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of this evening is to bring out some aspect of that part of us which is immortal and unchanging and beautiful and peaceful and loving, that thing called the soul, and bring out some aspect of it to see how it does work in our lives. And it is working in our lives. So these episodes, so to speak, are about you know, these extraordinary people that we talk to and their extraordinary lives and their extraordinary way that they are getting to be open to the soul working through them. And tonight is about what we call the yoga of relationship. And I, if some of you know a little bit about yoga, it is about that ability to be peaceful and calm and loving and detached and at the same time more passionate about what you're doing or if you're communicating or whatever than ever before. So it's a, it's a nonchalant type of um, detachment from being caught up in the drama of life. And we have with us tonight Beth Banning and Neil Gibson who have quite a, a big background in learning the art that is probably one of the most difficult arts of life to learn and that is the art of getting along with others, the art of communicating properly with others, the art of listening, really listening to others, and to actually be in a, in a, in a space of, of loving while we communicate with others. So you can see how important is this art. And we had a pre-interview with them, and we were um, kind of working a little process, Trish and I, with them. And I realized how valuable they are in situations where it's difficult to communicate with someone, could be a family member, could be a spouse, could be a work associate, but there's just some kind of karma between you. And um, sometimes after a yoga class, people will come up to me and say, oh, I wish I could just take you with me <laughs> and you'd be talking in my head all day. Well, in, 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 in a situation where it's really difficult because you're in too close to it, to see that you have a blind spot, where you're not listening anymore, where you have a big judgment, these are the two that I would want to call in for intervention. All right? So. Mm -hmm. Welcome, huh. Beth. Welcome, Neil. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> so for having glad us here. to be here. It's been Very wonderful, excited. wonderful opportunity. So. Yeah. yeah. What, what was one thing that got you interested in this in a really important aspect of life communication? What was it? What was it? Do you remember a pivotal time? I do. I, I actually remember exactly the moment that got me moving in this direction, trying to figure out what it is that is tweaked in what I see people do with each other that didn't feel right to me. Mm -hmm. And I was in high school. Um, it was, I think it was actually junior high. And there were, it was the 70s, and there were a lot of race riots going on. Where, where did I you lived? live? Newburgh, New York, uh -huh. upstate New York. And there was a riot at the school. And I remember hearing the principal over the loudspeaker saying, okay, everybody slowly, calmly move out. And there was so much yelling and screaming. And I was, you know, I mean, obviously I was scared. And I saw my brother up at the top of the stairs and somebody pushed him down the stairs. And I watched my brother falling down the stairs. And he was fine, but I mean, I, w I still kind of feel it when I talk about it now. And my mind went insane. Like, how could this happen? How could people be this way with each other? How, co how could people be that upset? What was going on that people were so upset? So I grabbed my brother, he was fine, and we ran out, and we lived about three or four blocks from the school. And we ran home, and I saw my mother, she must have heard what was going on. And she was standing outside, and she looked really worried, and I ran up to her and I said, Mom, what's going on? Why is everybody so angry? And she looked at me, and very wise for my mother, you know, like I still to this day go, wow, you know. She looked at me and she said, when people aren't listened to and when nobody when nobody will listen to them and they're not being heard they get angry mm. and in that moment mm. i real i wanted to find out 
why people weren't listening to other people. Why weren't they being heard? What was going on that, that had them be muted in the way they were? So I really, literally, that was the start of me nice. going, what's going on and how can I help make it mm. different? Mm. Wow. <coughs> and how did the two of you join together? Neil, do you have a story well, to you? And it's somewhat similar to Beth's in that there, you know, one of the things that I remember early in my life was uh, when my father took my older brother mm -hmm. and threw him in the swimming pool, you know, screaming in terror as a way to teach him how to swim. Mm. And there was, it, it's similar in that there was, it, it just seemed so abhorrent to me at some level, like, and so confusing how someone could have an idea about how to get something done that so didn't respect the other person involved. And that really, um, you know, as I grew up and went into high school again, it was the 60s and there was all of the, that uh, questioning authority and questioning how things were, were done. But it, it really st always was within me, this question, how is it that given who we seem to be, you know, that, that really precious, wonderful thing that people seem to be, that this is the way we act with each other. It just didn't make any sense. So really trying to you know, make sense of that and, and figure out how that happened, to, you know, how did it get to be that way, and then what can we do to make it different than that, mm -hmm. to really start getting in touch with not only recognizing who we are, but then learn how to relate to each other from that space, from that consciousness. So, so that was really my motivation. We met, I was uh, with a band of uh, cohorts at that time. Uh, we were putting together weekend workshops. This was in the early 90s. And at, at that time, I think we were calling them uh, Rumi's Field Workshops. Mm. Because uh, after that quote about, you know, out beyond a, all thoughts of right doing and wrong doing, there's a field, I'll meet you there. <laughs> yeah. So that was really the, the idea of that at that time was to have people come t together and to share what, that w what it was that was important and motivating to them, what was inspiring, what was alive in them. Mm. And to create a space free of judgment, free of um, any, any of that thinking that separates us and just be present to what do we have to offer to one another and how can we contribute to one another and support life. And Beth showed up at one of those, so that's, there that's, I was. How, that's how we <laughs> and got to I know each other. You two communicate <laughs> well. And, we we do. Together ever since. and it was nice because we really did see that bond from way back that both of us had and led mm -hmm. us led us to mm -hmm. that place where we could do it together and mm -hmm. really support people in shifting the way they, you know, communicate, the way they just see the world. So when we first got together with Beth and Neil, it was so very interesting because what they said to us, we were talking mm -hmm. about, you know, how to focus this in for just a, a short little time that we'd have together. And they, they made a comment, they said, well, how about if we focus on the fact that everyone in every conversation is either saying please or thank you. And we dove deep into that. And it's an interesting concept, mm -hmm. isn't it? <laughs> that every conversation pe people are communicating. And so it's being able to hear the please and hear the thank you. Why don't you play with this a little bit for sure. us? Okay. Well, one of the things too, it's and not only what they say, but everything they do, everything that happens is either a please or a thank you out there. So just as far as, you know, you can make it wide. So um, one of the things that we were talking to you about is if something happens and pleases, pleases are harder to hear than thank yous. Thank yous are easy to hear. You know, people say thank you, they tell you how they like something. They, I mean, it's just easy to hear. You hear them all the time, you feel good about them. Thank you, thank you, thank you feels good, right? Pleases sometimes are a little less easy to hear. They sound like judgments, they sound like what you should do, what you shouldn't do, but people are always just saying please. There's something underneath the judgments, the, the advice, the, all those things that you go, you know, you, you reel against. 
but if you relax enough and look under the words, there's always a please, something they want from you, something they deeply value. Well, if you look at your examples, exactly the race rides, they're saying, please, please can please, we be equal, please. can you exactly. hear us? And right. in your case, both the fa both the father and your brother were saying please. Right. Father said, please learn to swim, and right. your brother was saying, please, let's not <laughs> just throw me in the pool. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> please yeah. don't do yeah. that. That's exactly. Right. Uh -huh. So, so what, one of the things that we uh, did with uh, Tom and Tricia, we find that it's not uh, very effective to talk about this. I mean, we could sit and talk about all the distinctions that mm -hmm. we have and all the, you know, ideas and the philosophy of it and all of it. Um, so when we actually got to talking about, so what is it we do, he says, well, we, we never developed a really good elevator speech. Mm -hmm. So the, it's always more effective for us if we just go, so what's something that's going on in your life that you're not as happy as you would like to <laughs> be it with? And, we'll and show let's you. just kind of go through that and <laughs> you're then. You're going to make us work for this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they Hope you yeah. enjoy it. <laughs> It's way more fun this way. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, it's a lot more alive. And then as, as uh, we go through the situations, it's like the key pieces, what's important to pay attention to that has it be different becomes obvious. Yeah. So then it, in the moment, it's a lot more alive to say, well, here's, here's the difference in how to look at it. One of the other things, too, is in, in our workshops we do the same things, is that, I don't know about you, but it, I have to really experience something to get it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it not true. like, I, I mean, I can hear things and I, I think I get it, but until I really experience it, I don't get it. So that's what's great about the uh, role plays and live examples, is that people will feel how, how it feels to experience that. So that's why we like to play. So do you have okay. something you can play with? Yes, we do. It just so happens that <laughs> Tom and I, um, Tom and I are the middle children. We each have an older sister that's very close in age with us and a younger sister who's much younger. Oh, funny. Yeah, isn't that funny? Yeah. And then and um, within a few mo weeks of each other, just in December, both of our mothers fell. And our older sisters, who had been the caregivers, had moved away. So our mothers are being taken care of by our little sisters. And I've been gone for the last 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> well, me too. There's a lot of pleasing going on. Me too, exactly on. 40 years. So, yeah, so but we're But you left home earlier than I did. At 17, yeah, because I'm younger than he is. <laughs> <laughs> I left at 18, she left at 17. So anyway, so we get a call right before we sit down with, with Neil and Beth, and both of our little sisters are saying, Help us here. Help us with mom. They're saying please, but in a language that either I have turned turned off, and it wasn't hearing the please at all. It's just like, oh God, here she goes. Story. Again, probably. Again, right. right? And then all of a sudden, you know, I'm not enjoying the conversation at all. How did yours go? Well, my little sister's not really talking <laughs> to me right now, so you're going to start. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she won't print See, my phone calls. She won't write me email. So you start. See, is this is <laughs> more fun already, <laughs> right? <laughs> to <Yeah>. me. <laughs> we'll see how Carolyn feels about it. Okay, so uh, go ahead and start. Your, your, your sister, your Gina, and this. So is we'll just you. do a real. That's what we did when we we worked with these guys um, in our pre-interview. Is we did a role play, so it, yeah. you can see how it might go differently if you're if you're um, using some of the distinctions. And I, I guess I want to explain the word distinction in case. Uh, people don't know what it means. And it's, it's, it's the difference between something, something you know and something you don't know. So we have about, I don't know, 35, 35 40. different distinctions that throughout our work we offer to people so that they can see something maybe they haven't seen before. Like so little we'll nuggets of wisdom, right? Exactly. Well, ah actually, it's. We, I picked ahas? up. Ahas. Ahas. <laughs> well, they are ahas. <laughs> yeah. I picked up the the word, you know, in, in my studies, and, and basically everything that we understand, we understand because we see it as different than something. If we don't, if we only see one thing, we have no choice in the matter. And that's what I started finding was that most people walk through life and they hear somebody saying please in a way that's very hard for them, and they only have this way to be about it. So what we're talking about are, are real differences in how to be, so in that moment you can have a choice. Mm. And one of the things that, before we get into the role play, I'd like to uh, 
point out it, that this is all really about our intention and our intention to live from really what we know as our highest self, our truest self in every moment. So mm -hmm. in just in this situation, for you, stepping aside of, from the situation itself, what are some aspects or qualities that you would like to see present in this relationship with your younger sister? What kinds of things would you like to be there? Harmony, consideration, those kinds of things. So, Understanding. Yeah, yeah. so which, which things would you, like what's the list, a uh, short list of three or four things you'd like to see there? Well, uh, uh, should I be honest? Yes, please. Yeah. That yeah. would help. <laughs> um, Honesty. Yeah. Yeah. Honesty is nice. Honesty. Um, it, well, first of all, uh, when I think in terms of, of my blood relatives, um, I, I just think in terms of, of being gotten. So well, understood. Understood, you yeah. know. Understood for, for, for where I'm coming from, and of course, I want to understand w where they're coming from. So, okay. so right away there is just this, uh, all right, I'm, uh, there's no pressure. There's no pressure because I get you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, and I understand. I understand, you know, where you, how you spent your life, and and the situation you're in. So, given that, now, now let's 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 talk about a, a situation. Right. So understanding. So, so understanding, yeah. Um, probably a spiritual perspective, since that's where where I live. You know, so you're. So, so and then in in order for us to work with this, what. If that per spiritual perspective was present, then what would you experience there? What would be present for you and the other person? Would it be love. more connection, love, peace, caring? I think, what would be, what I would think that more, more of a coming together in terms of, you know, um, our attitudes about situations, in this case, our mother, that there would be a, a, a way that, you know, because of the spiritual perspective that we could let go of what I think about it or what you think about it and look at it in terms of what, what, is, what is the right thing to do in terms of, you know, the highest principles. Okay. So, yeah. there so would kind be of a le alignment and clarity is the kind of stuff. Is that yeah. accurate? Yeah. Alignment and clarity, kind of just, you know, again, see, mm -hmm. the, seeing the big picture about this and not just this little scenario which can go on for many years in a, in a mm -hmm. single lifetime, but I mean really pulling the lens back and getting a spiritual perspective. This really brings up, if you're okay if I, it brings up one of the distinctions. And this is where most people get really stuck and we see it all the time. And it's the difference between s the strategies you want to use to accomplish something and the underlying values, what it is you value. And what happens is we hear a lot, well, we have opposing values. And we don't think that actually happens is usually what happens is you have opposing strategies. Mm -hmm. You have this idea about how to get something mm -hmm. you want mm -hmm. and you're afraid to like loosen up around that because the other person isn't going to agree with it. And really if you're stuck around strategies, you're probably not going to get what you want. Mm -hmm. So and really what Neil's talking about is getting to the underlying what's deeply important to you. What is at a soul level? Mm -hmm. important to you that you want to have not just in this relationship but just have as an experience for you and the people around you. Mm -hmm. So if you can get underneath that first then these strategies, the ideas, the ways of accomplishing what there is to accomplish because there's obviously things to accomplish just kind of start emerging mm -hmm. from that place. Mm -hmm. So if you start there you're way better off. Nice. Yeah. Well, I'll add the third one then, because th th I would say to to be willing to listen and, and also to be heard without the strategy mm -hmm. getting in there first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So somebody else's strategy hitting you before you can communicate. Right, and and that and we'll show you how that goes. Okay. It, that it's not as simple as it sounds, but there's places in which you can play with that. So understanding, clarity, perspective, alignment perspective? Well, that big picture perspective. The, okay. mm -hmm. the principle, the value that you were talking okay. about. Okay. So just, um, and again, we'll find out what the other person's is too, because that's really important to bring what theirs, because they have those same yeah. things that are just, they're just so wanting to experience, mm -hmm. and that's they're their not. That's their Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's their please. Perfect. So I was thinking that the next thing, so thanks for giving it, that actually gives me something to work with as far as in the role play, because I know where you want to go. Yeah. Okay. Right. So he can be you more. 
that so, more fully. <laughs> so what is it that, uh, can you think of one thing that you heard your sister say, uh, please about in a way that was hard for you to hear? Can you remember specifically what she said? Well, she's pretty much burned out in. Say, so sister, should he say it in an I situation as and if just he's have his him sister? Be the sister? Yeah. Okay, so yes, you're yeah. Gina. I'm Gina? Just yeah. be Gina and all Gina her. And just, just say what the way it was that. Oh, yeah, well, you know that now that our older sister has moved away and, and you're, you're rarely around, I have pretty much am burned out in taking care of mother. And uh, I would really, really, really like it if you would spend some more time with her. Okay. That would really help me out. So. Uh, that was very nice. Huh? <laughs> you don't think well, that's Gina? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's she fine. had, you know, she was Gina right. when she was saying this, but that's right. basically. With, with, all that, with all that Gina. Right? With yeah. all so, the Gina energy. Okay. So and, right. and really all there is to do to receive a message like this, and this is actually another one of the distinctions that we find is, is really critical for people to understand, is understanding does not mean agreement. This is and huge. this is critical yeah. for people because most people, when they, find themselves in this seat, listening to someone who has a, a, a painful complaint that's directed at us, if I hear them, then that means they're going to think I agree with them. So I go straight into defending. Well, no, this is my opinion. And then you get you know, this kind of a thing going on, mm -hmm. and there's no communication. So the first thing, if you can actually sit in that place of going, first, what's my intention? Right? Well, my intention in hearing this message is, create this closeness and understanding and really for us to mm. get to this perspective that serves both of us mm. and serves our mother and that's really my intention here. Mm -hmm. But from that perspective, it's very important for me to hear what this message is. So then, and it doesn't mean that I agree with anything you've said. I'm just hearing it. Mm -hmm. So it was fairly straightforward the way you said it. You're really feeling overwhelmed. You'd like more support. You have been doing this for longer than you can enjoy. You would like for this support to come from me, and you'd like me to do that in a very particular way. Yeah, I wish I would have responded that way. <laughs> but, that's, but you get, that's all, that was you get beautiful. that's all she said, right? That's all she said. Well, you're, you're me now, though, right? Yeah. yeah. So I just, I, said, said, I just said to no, Tom, Gina, Now, I what said, would you say? What would Gina say? Yeah, no, that. so that's what I said back to you. So what would you say? It usually you, doesn't end that. there, and it's usually right. not that simple. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> what would you say then? So go that. ahead and say it again. It sounded so, I really so good. <laughs> <laughs> so I really hear that you're really overwhelmed. You're tired. You've been doing this for longer than you enjoy. You'd like to get some support in it. You'd like that support to come from me. And I guess there are some particular ways you'd like that support from me. Mm -hmm. Is that accurate? It is. It is. And, and uh, right now I, could, I would like to see you go up to L.A. and spend a night or two nights and, and just be with, be with Mom. So just having anyone come up and spend that time so you could have a break from taking on that responsibility. Yeah, I really need now, a break. Okay. So now, here I'm removing myself from the strategy because mm -hmm. all, all she really wants is to have a break from doing that herself. Now, their strategy is for me to do it. Okay. But I want to get down to just what it is underneath that. So, so, so really that was kind of key, what you just said, to have someone mm -hmm. be with her, right? That's I just removed myself from yeah. Yeah. being. And the th again, if I'm not defending myself and trying to not get sucked into your ideas and all I'm doing is listening, then I can hear these things. Mm -hmm. and really what's important for you is to have a break. And somehow you fixated on me as the strategy. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> but that doesn't mean it's the only strategy. Right. So, so saying that, you really like to have someone in, and you think the easiest person to do that would be me. Is that accurate? Right, right, because she is our mother, yeah. right? And, when, and you'd like to have some sense of recognition for shared responsibility because we both, she's both of our mothers. Yeah. There's something about that, too. Mm -hmm. And you've been gone for a long time. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And really, in, in re response to that, there's some sense of responsibility, shared responsibility that's very important to her, that she sees that, why should I be doing this when you know you're the a sibling too, and you've been gone, and I've been doing this long? So there's there's this idea of fairness and sharing responsibilities and equity and that kind of thing that's very important. So again, I'd want to make sure I heard that too. Mm -hmm. And there's a, one of the things that I learned 
if you ever hear somebody telling you the same thing over and over and over again, mm. you know, they, they should go to On and On Anonymous. <laughs> it, the easiest way to have them stop telling you it is to hear it. Mm -hmm. Because there's a point at which, and, I, and really after I've fed that back to you, then there's a point, is there anything else that you want to let me know about that? Mm. It's like they've been heard. There's nothing else to say. So now we move into how am I about that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so that, when are you going to go up to see mom? And yeah, that's that, really that, key is that there's, n we never would want you to give up anything that's important to you either. Because if you do things out of obligation, um, because you have to, all those kinds of places, there's, there's only resentment that will come from it. Right. So again, it's it, once we were talking when we did the interview, it's like the most conscious one listens first and then you speak, you know, mm -hmm. and they may come up again and start saying things and then you listen again. So it really is like a dance. Did you hear that? Isn't that good? The most conscious person listens first. <laughs> well, you know. We have to underscore yeah. that. <laughs> now, in now, the moment, and the consciousness changes, you know, yeah. you, you may right. not be always the <laughs> one that's know. most conscious. <laughs> <laughs> that happens. That's that's right. And you can both be not conscious. Right. <laughs> and, you know, and you and need <laughs> to do something else <laughs> for right. a while. Right. Now, mm. you brought up another mm -hmm. distinction before we move on, because one time after class, they, uh, Beth and Neil had been to my yoga class, and I had used the word compromise once too often. <laughs> and, and they came up to me afterwards and said, we want to talk to you about compromise. Tell us. Well, one of the things, we believe compromise is actually destructive in a relationship. That who knew? Who knew? But, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you can feel it, actually, if you compromise about something. One, because one definition of compromise is each side gives up a little and a little and giving up and giving up until everybody can be happy with what's left. Like settle. <laughs> it's not really settle with and, what's and left. And that's, right. the, that's the root of resentment, yeah. is to walk away and not have something that's important to you because it was Ooh. the only way you could get to some sort of agreement around the situation. And, hmm. and this gets back to the strategy issue. That happens when people have strategies that what they're primarily trying is. to do is negotiate for a win for their strategy. So I, you know, I have this particular idea mm -hmm. and then well, I'm willing to let go of this piece of it and this piece of it and you're willing to go of that piece and that piece and, and maybe you know, these uh, little okay. pieces yeah. that we have left. So what we find is if you come from a place of intention where you really pay attention to what's very valuable at this, as I, this, in the same way I've been listening to your sister and just paying attention to what's valuable to her. And then you speak only what's valuable for you. If you actually get very clear about what's valuable, what's most important, what's life serving for both people, then, then the, the solutions, the strategies begin to actually emerge from they those. Really it's do. like, an, and it takes care of everything. Hmm. But then the negotiation is, well, that strategy still leaves this piece out. And it's like, so then the negotiation is, well, what strategy can we come up with? How inventive and creative yeah, are we? To come fun. up with a strategy that makes sure that all of these pieces are taken care of when we walk away. Hmm. One of the things we hear all the time is, but this takes so long. Okay. <laughs> and but we then hear this from people that have had an argument going on for, for five, five years. For five years. We're and like, yeah, how long has this so argument long. taken? You know? <laughs> <laughs> like really, and this is more fun. Yeah. So, yeah what it does was the well. word you used? You said not compromise. Well, it's collaboration. Collaboration. It's really, it's really figuring or out conscious that. negotiation. Mm. Yeah. You know. So it's the process of conscious negotiation. But it's it's okay. getting to that place of collaboration where it's really you working together to try and build something. Mm -hmm. We have this whole process of creating a shared vision. So once you once everybody is pretty much heard, then you can come from a place of, okay, so let's really create this vision together. And the vision, again, is not strategies. It's the values. It's what's deeply mm -hmm. important to everyone. And where everyone finally goes, yes, that's it. That's what, that's what I want to experience here. And then if you can just get to those things you want to experience, there are dozens and dozens of strategies you can come up with to experience, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to be you, you know? Because yeah. if she can get, and she probably, you know, there's probably those things in the relationship where she wants to know you care. And the way she thinks you, she will know that is, is if you go do this right. particular thing. Right, right. And uh, you know, I'm guessing there's lots of yes. ways she can know you care. It's a love should test. Go, should we go back there sure. then? 
Yeah. So then, so I was at this point, and I because we'd done a little bit of this before, I I know that some of the things that are important to you are what some of those are, and so I'll just kind of respond, and you let me know if I get okay. you wrong. But um, so I've just heard that there there's this list of things that are important, or and then so how I am about that is um, well. First, I, I mean, I get that, and I would like to see you have some relief from this. So I want you to understand that that's important to me. And I'd also like to work together to figure out how we can move to get forward with this, mm -hmm. because I do have some desire to, to help. She is my mom, too, even, even if I did run off to the ashram 40 years ago. But there are some things for me that's going on in the situation where I'm uncomfortable with the way the help is happening because I see that there are some things that are going on for mom that, that as much help as she's getting, I don't believe is really supportive for her to take responsibility for herself and her to do as much as she can. And I'm worried that you're starting to get, like take on making her life be the way she wants it when I can't agree really with having it happen that way. So I'd like to figure out, well, first of all, I'd like to know, because message sent is not necessarily message received. So I'd like to know what you heard me say first, mm -hmm. like just to know that I, I kind of made it clear. So can you repeat back what you heard me say? And do this from the way your sister would respond. Well, f from what I, I heard you say is that you do care, that even though you've been away, that still our mom. And that, uh, but you don't necessarily agree with, with the way that she's been needing our help and the, and the way that I've been as assisting her. And, uh, and that's exactly right. Well, that You're a wonderful more. sister. Yeah, <laughs> I, boy, I, I know. Because no, really, what could I say? Are you saying I've not done enough? Or, I've, or I'm doing you something, you something yeah. wrong. Yeah, are you yeah, saying right. that I'm doing something yeah. wrong? Right. You, Why who, do I have to? Who are you to, to criticize how I'm taking yeah. care <laughs> of her? Or, or, you don't I mean, get a like say. You don't take well, care right. of her. Yeah. It would be exactly. good if it was so you know? easy. Yeah, right. Yeah, so, <laughs> so nice. you're great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> problem. That's why we get along so well. Absolutely. You heard him But really, there's all sorts of ways. Again, with as much pain and resentment as she has, it's very unlikely that she's going to be conscious enough to to actually have heard one word I've said. Mm -hmm. And so then That's what you're going to hear back is the next salvo of just like mm -hmm. you were saying. Probably mm -hmm. a big sigh. <sighs> yeah, mm -hmm. or this is just you trying to get out of your responsibility again, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But whatever it is, then there's, again, is, is that thank you? Well, no. no. <laughs> it's not thank you. So it's please. Mm -hmm. So what's it please for? And really it's please for, I don't trust the, you're actually willing to do this. I believe, you know, I, I need more trust in our relationship. I need some demonstration that you've actually mm. care as much as you say you do. I need some sense of, of support that's more tangible than just you coming up with your own opinions about how it should be happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I need more understanding, more trust, mm -hmm. and more support than what it sounds like you're about to offer. Mm. So again, it's just this matter, as long as you hear that, then that's fine. I get it. Right. So, but if I'm sticking with what's important to me, then once I get that and I get back from her, yeah, that's it. You know they've been heard when you go, is there anything else? And they go, so they say, no, that's, you know, no, that's it. Mm. Right. Then that's the, then the pipe's clear and you can start, you know. But then there's that question of, so I, I'd like to be clear about what it is that I see going on, and I'd like to let you know that I don't have any judgment about how you're doing things. Mm -hmm. And I'd also like to express my appreciation for as much as you do. Because really, I think a lot of that is probably what mm -hmm. is important to her at this point. She wants some acknowledgement and appreciation for everything she's done. Mm -hmm. So again, if I go back to what you told me your values were, mm -hmm. wouldn't it be in harmony with your values to give her that appreciation? Really? Mm -hmm. of course, yeah. And to really have that understanding of what's important to her and so this is totally. just you living this is just you living out what you value. Right. It's not like you're sitting over here compromising and doing anything to 
to make it okay for or her. Or even strategizing at this point. Mm -hmm. Like at all. Yeah, thanks for noticing yeah. that. We, there's not a single strategy that's right. been exchanged yet. And that's huge, as yeah. is from the, the listening point of view, not to add advice, not strategies, not anything other than just hearing and, and yeah. appreciation. Yeah. If there's, and again, we were talking the other night, it, it all, you know, being present, being present for the other person is, has to come from a place of, of sincerity. You know, uh, very often people will go, okay, I'm going to listen first, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. So what I think somebody was, what was that empathy from hell, you know, <laughs> it's like it, it just doesn't, it, it doesn't do what you're wanting it to do anyway. So unless you are in a place of, of coming from those values, you know, really willing to listen, able to, because oftentimes you have years of this stuff too. I'm sure that, you know, you're triggered in those moments and you've got to clear that space so that you can come present. And if you're not, like even if you get triggered in the moment, then you back off and you, and you say, you know, I want to be present. I want to really be able to hear you and I'm not being able to. So I'm going to step away for a while or I'll, I'll call you in an hour or whatever it is for you mm -hmm. to be able to get present again because I want to be that for you. You know, I'm seeing some yogic overlap here. Me too. And um, <laughs> so let's say, for instance, though, and Richard, we're talking about family, and we have history for as mm -hmm. long as we've been alive. We've known these people, yeah. uh, these beautiful <laughs> souls. And so if you know, let's say that some of them has maybe, some of them have a, um, a flared temper. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then before you go to talk to them, there's going to be a reaction from all that time, it, you know, it, it, you have to, in order to not be the empathy from hell, you have to be fearless. Yes. You have to be, to be able to go in and say, I'm willing to go, you know, be the conscious and listen fearlessly, mm -hmm. because otherwise you are going to, there's going to be some kind of body and they're going to know, you know, it's like that mat, cat, mouse thing. Yes. Cat and mouse thing. If they, you know, they well, get it. They get right. it. Yeah. We're and all what we there. find is that what you're talking about really is that is just simply doing the same conversation process, but doing it internally, because the Before degree you. that you mm. you Even imagine yourself time. going into this situation and then you start going like this, <laughs> right? All there is is that's your body saying please. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's your body saying, please. It's like, don't put me in. <laughs> don't make me go <laughs> Don't make me go. Like, you go. Right. <laughs> but if you get, and this is part of the process, actually. The, it, it's, a, it's a very valuable process because on, it's kind of a, and uh, on the face of it, it looks like fear, apprehension, you know, anxiety. On the back side of that, like if you flip it over, really what that really is, is everything you value. And the only reason you ever have any tension going into a situation is that you, there's something you really value, mm -hmm. and what you're projecting is you're not going to get, get it. Not going to get it. Mm. Right? Or that it's going to be hard, or there's something about yeah. And again, at that point, mm -hmm. then, what you value just may be ease or... Um, respect. Uh, respect is a tricky one, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> or to be heard, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> to, yeah. Heard, to listen and to yeah. be heard. Appreciation, appreciation, acknowledgement, connection, ease. It's those kinds of things you would like. But again, mm -hmm. if you get down to the point of going, okay, so, so who I am, what I'm committed to in my life is experiencing connection, ease, acknowledgement, then what there is for you to do when you walk in the situation is to establish connection, to acknowledge, to be that change Living that you want to you see in the world. Right. This is. This is a very practical application of that. that. It's those things that are important to you that you're trying to manifest in those situations. And it's also very much living in the moment. Mm -hmm. Talk about living in the moment. Anytime you're feeling, just like what you were saying, anytime you're feeling any anxiety at all, you're worried about something that's going to happen or something that had happened. So it's really about being present. And it's about being present to yourself as well as the other person. Mm -hmm. So that internal um, empathy can happen in that moment. So all of a sudden you start going, and you start getting back to what's important to you that you're not experiencing right now. Now either you can get present again and continue the conversation, or you can't, but it's really, really important to be so honest about what's going on with you 
for yourself that you're willing to get up and stop the conversation. Mm -hmm. Because it, 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 it then will start going places you aren't going to enjoy mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. yeah, thanks you know. for that. And really what you were saying about being <coughs> fearless, when you're connected with what mm -hmm. you do That's want fearless. and what is most valuable to you and you have a clear intention, there is no fear there. So it's not like stealing yourself into fearlessness. It's about clearing yourself so that you're so clear about what it is that you want to create in the situation that you can be that so clearly that there is no fear in that. The fearlessness really for me comes with being that honest. Mm. Because in this society, in this world, and, and how we are in relationship with one another, we're not very honest. We're just not with ourselves or with other people. Mm. So really for me personally, that's where the fearlessness comes in, is being completely honest about how I am. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the timing of, of our discussion tonight, you know, on the week before New Year's um, is perfect, I think, because who wouldn't want to be more themselves in mm -hmm. 2012, meaning to be their soul because the soul is so complete. It's just everything that, that is, is, you don't need anything from anybody. You have, mm -hmm. n you have nothing that you want yourself because you're so complete. The soul is so happy, the soul is so loving, the soul is so peaceful. So if ever there was a conversation mm. to remind us that the work that as yogis that we're doing is, is really right on target. Mm -hmm. Because imagine sitting with a master, sitting with, with someone who's realized and really quite frankly you'd be overwhelmed by the love, by the attention that they were giving. There would never be a, a, a much of a discussion probably because these values would be so powerful. Present. And you feel so, so present. understood. Yeah. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. It, it yeah. could yeah. wipe out, you know, the, 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 the traumas and the hurts of, of many years, if yeah. not lifetimes, just yeah. in, in one relationship like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's a process. Well, yeah. I was going to yeah. say then, once you learned, was the, given that if one of the parties is not a master, mm -hmm. then <laughs> I would imagine... It's a lot of those. <laughs> <laughs> me, me included. <laughs> um, not in our relationship. <laughs> but we'll leave it to you to realize... Excuse me. Um, first of all, please give everyone a little bit of a resource here of where they could continue to learn or practice. And how long does this sort of... I mean, it takes a lot of being present and a lot of self being really mm -hmm. aware of what's going on and what your motivations are, your intentions, mm -hmm. to, to really pull this off in, uh, truly. What was that word you were using when we talked before? We have to get, get rid of a lot of old programming. Programming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a whole, I mean, there's a whole part of the work we do that is taking a look. Again, a lot of people, especially in the spiritual communities where, you know, we're so spiritual and we push the stuff that's there anyway and people feel it and they know it. So we go back and take a look at it. Now we don't dice it out and we don't figure out where it came from and how it, you know, it's affecting you, but to get present to it so that you can make a choice. Again, everything we do is about choosing. So you can choose consciously. Everything's about choosing. And we have everything we need to make those choices. So, um, you know, the past programming, we've got to take a look at so then we can choose what, what do we want. And oftentimes there isn't something else to choose. And that's where the values come in. And that's where what you deeply, deeply is important to you comes in because you get to choose that. Nice. So you go, oh, that's that again. You know, when you're feeling tense or anxious, mm -hmm. it's usually from some belief that has been, you know, programmed into your cells at this point. So you just go, oh, that's that again. What is it that I want to choose in this moment? And then you settle into that and then move forward. Nice. So, you know, to answer your question, you've got to get all the distinctions. You've got to experience it, them. You know, we do that in, a, I don't know, two 10-week courses where mm. we offer all the distinctions. Mm. So after you know, 20 weeks, you have them, and then it's about practicing them. You know, Neil and I are, are pretty proficient in all of them, and you know, we're, yeah, not we're, still you know, we're, <laughs> you know, we're not Buddha. We still have our challenges on a regular basis. You say, how long does it take? Well, let's see, I'm <laughs> 58 years and working on it now. Um, but at 
but kind it's of on way the other, more fun. But on, on the other you side know. of it, you know what we see is that, <clears throat> and, and really I'm, I'm more of a, a technician than uh, I am anything else, I guess. So my take on all of this was, there's got to be a way to make this work. You know, it's like, how do you, how do you figure this out <laughs> so that you can you know, do the it kinds really of things is. so you put it together and you, right? And that's actually what we've done with our, our work is we said, well, here are these distinctions. What are the things that, what's, before they get anything, what do they need? And then what do they need next? And then what's the one after that? And how do these things build on each other? And so that's, you know, all of the work we've done has gone into putting the distinctions together in very experiential ways so that each one you have that aha. Oh, it's like riding a bicycle. Once you learn to ride a bicycle, mm -hmm. you always know it. So unless you've got that kind of experiential, oh yeah, I get that, that makes sense to me. The other thing about having an experiential shift like that where you really do make this distinction is, is people are, are very much, if there's a way that gets me more of what I want more quickly and at less cost, I'll do that. Yeah. It's like I don't have <laughs> to, I don't have is, to you know. write it down on my calendar and remember to go yeah. sit there or do anything about it. It's like once we figure out a way to do it, that's the way we'll do it. So that's really has been our goal is how do you give them an experience where they go, ha, why would I ever do that again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. But there so, are huge, huge breakthroughs yeah, yeah, after, huge. I mean, people notice difference with their families immediately after the course yeah. because then they're willing, they see a choice. Right. So they mm -hmm. can stop doing things the way they did and choose something different. Mm -hmm. So it, again, it takes a lifetime and it happens immediately. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like both yeah. of those things Week by once. week, one of the things we do, especially when we do a 10 week course, we come together for a week, we deal with some of the distinctions, then people go, oh, out, so we fun. have, we have practices, so take this out in your life and try this out. So they're starting yeah. to see things <laughs> shift in their relationships right along. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, there's, it's, it's quite, there's quite a lot involved. Just, yes. I mean, we only touched on a few of the things yeah. and you can get that behind this, there's a whole shift in the way you see the world yeah. and yourself. Mm -hmm. So really, it takes a certain amount of time to, to have that integrate to the point where the world starts looking at you different, differently, but then from there on, it's a matter of just having the practice and support, you know, to, to, mm -hmm. to keep it. Because there's up. subtler and subtler levels. I mean, with, you know, any spiritual yeah, sure. practice, there's mm -hmm. more sure. finely and finely defined things that you go, oh, wow, I didn't even know that was in there, you yeah. know? Right. So. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. you're doing something here at the Soul. We are, we're well, so excited. Yes. The 26th? Yeah. 20, the 26th of February is that it's a 10 week course we're doing every Sunday from at 1 30. 1 30 to 3 30. Mm -hmm. Are you doing a 10 week? Yeah. A 10 week. A 10 we week. find yeah, that we, people we really to integrate everything. Find all the space to yeah. do that too. I was is that when you'll go through those distinctions? Yes. Yeah. yeah that's the first. Them. Well, it's the first half. It's right? the first half. Wow. Yeah. The so then, need. yeah, it's just every, every uh, Sunday except for the 15th of April because so many people are busy on that day. <laughs> no, actually, yeah, there's something, there something going here. on. <laughs> 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 like right? Easter. Yeah. Well, thank you. You gave You're us, so I mean, just to think about it, right? Just hearing that everyone, when we're in a conversation, is either saying please or thank you. And if we mm. can be conscious enough to hear what they're asking for or even listen to ourselves speak in a, mm. in a way that we're hearing someone else or feeling someone else back off. Yeah. We know that we're saying please and maybe we can get to the point where we can say it a little bit more. And to nice. be really, really clear about one's own intention mm -hmm. and honest with it. Yeah. Just don't show up and see what happens, in other words. But I mean, you know, this is why right. it, we, you would want to meditate and clear and mm -hmm. do all that and just get the most powerful, soulful, loving space in your heart so that maybe you can listen even for a little bit and then don't beat yourself up if you can't right you know mm -hmm. it's like right. you just come back it's that's right. huge too yeah. and i and i just want to honor your willingness to use your own i yes. i consider that well uh, did, did you gift. did you notice how cagey she was though <laughs> <laughs> was i mean it was right. about both of our sisters <laughs> and both of the situations and she'll oh we'll start with tom <laughs> That was really good, That's sweetheart. That's because your sister's yeah. talking to you. But. All right. So this is one case where thank you is actually probably please. <laughs> <laughs> right? Very That's good. That's a great way to end it. Yeah, thank, you yeah. thank you both. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for thank coming. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.